Assalamu alaikum my friends. Welcome to my channel Learn Quranic Arabic with Shazia. Today we are going to learn the first lesson or it's an intro introductory lesson to Quranic script. Now there are uh, different scripts in which Quran has been written but the script that we will be learning is the Uthmani script and there are little difference between other scripts like usually you find in indo pak that is used mostly in the uh, asian subcontinents but uh, the ismani script is usually uh, found in the makkah and medina and they have little difference in their uh, lettering uh, uh, structure and there are some symbols in Quran that we should know before reciting the Quran. And we should be knowing about the details about the symbols. So let's first do the uh, details of the symbols as we have learned about the harakas. It's more about the harakas. So here we can see the Quranic script symbols. What are they? the marks so the three marks that we learned up till now was fatha tamma and kasra and in this bracket you can see the fatha is actually you can find in normal arabic also in normal arabic books and dhamma fatha and kasra they all look the same but in this bracket it's it seems like in the uthmanic script this this is the actual script that you find in the Usmanic script the fatha the dhamma and the kasra looks the same but when we come to sukun in the standard arabic the sukun is seen as a small zero above a letter but in the Usmanic script in the Quran, actually this bracket tells you that it is a script of Usmanic script in Quran. The sukun is something, it looks like something, uh, it's um, half a sad or the starting point of ha, it seems like this. So, and in normal Arabic, you will find it's a little zero above a letter and what about the shadda the shadda seems the same in standard arabic and in the quranic script or the uthmanic script as you can see here the shadda is the same with fatha and when shadda comes with the dhamma it's the same in standard arabic and it's same in uthmanic script so this is basically to show you that how the symbols or the harakas are if you find any Arabic normal book or uh, Quran with Uthmanic script. And even the kasra remains the same. But what is the difference between the kasra in standard Arabic and in the Quranic script is the only difference is that in standard Arabic, what you will find is that Shadda with Kasra comes together on top. As you can see here, it comes together. If there is a Kasra, it will come below the Shadda. And if there is a Fatha, it will come above the Shadda. So this is the only difference. But in Quranic Uthmanic script, what happens? The Shadda is written above the letter and the Kathra is below the letter, not with the Shadda. So that's the only difference you find in the uh, Uthmanic script and the normal standard Arabic. So this is all about the uh, normal Harakas that we have learned before Fatha, Dhamma and Kathra, Shadda and Sukun. So now uh, we come to point number two, the Tanween. So what is Tanween? As it's the uh, double haraka. It's the same haraka, Fatha, Dhamma and Kasra, but it's double. It's double. So when the harakas are double, it's known as Tanween. And what about 
when we say it's a fatha. You can say it's a tanween and you can say tanween fatha, tanween damma or tanween kasra. But in Arabic we say fatha tain. Sorry. We say fatha tain. Fatha tain in duels. Why duels? Fatha tain. Uh, that means two fatha. Then dhamma tain. That means two dhamma. So that is the name we say fatha tain, dhamma tain, and kas rotain. So this is why because we have two fatha, two dhamma and two kasra. But if you say it's a tanin fatha, tanin dhamma or tanin kasra, it's okay. So here it's a normal. As you can see in standard Arabic is the clear fatha, two fathas. But in Quranic or the Uthmanic script, how do you find? It's the same. It's actually the same. The fatha tain, the dhamma tain is the same. Sometimes in standard Arabic, you will see a slight slash of line above a dhamma. So it's, it's just the difference in the script. It's the same tanin dhamma, but it's just the difference in the script. Either you can see two dhammas or you can see a single dhamma with a slight slash of line above it. And uh, what about the kasra tain? It's the same. You can find the two fatha, uh, two kasratain below a letter. It's somewhat a bit, uh, it's uh, parallel lines. And here also you can see two parallel lines together. So it's just the same, but a slight difference in the script. So this is what you call tanin fatha, tanin dhamma or tanin kasra. Or you can say in Arabic fatha tain, dhamma tain and kasra tain. So let's move on to point number three. What is point number three? The letters written smaller than usual. Now this is the most important uh, in uh, Uthmanic script or in uh, Indo-Pak script. You can when you read the Quranic uh, uh, script, you can see small letters come in between the ayahs. So now we will learn about these small letters. What are they and what's their name and what do they mean? So the first one we come across is this small alif and it's also known as in um, Arabic, it's called alif sagira. You can memorize these names and it looks like it looks like a small alif above a letter where you need to prolong the sound. Now, in this uh, case, uh, this is the word in Uthmanic script, Malik. Now, in standard Arabic, you will find with an alif here. In standard Arabic, you find with an alif and you know that I have to prolong the sound because this is a long vowel. Malik, two counts, one and two. So whenever you see in standard Arabic, you know that you need to count uh, two because this is a long vowel and you uh, pronounce it as Malik. But in Uthmanic script, what happens? You don't find an alif after the meme but instead you find a small alif here or known as alif sagira so this when you see the small alif you need to see that you have to prolong the sound even though you uh, don't have a long vowel here so you need to prolong the sound by seeing the alif sagira you know that you need to prolong the sound by two counts and it's known as Alif Sagira. So what is the work of Alif Sagira here? To prolong the sound by two counts. 
So this is known as Elif Sagheera. The first one we did. Now what about the second one? Uh, for example, here they have given is example. A uh, second example here is taqwa. So what do you see here? You see in the spelling, this is the standard Arabic. You see an alif maqsura. What is this letter? This is alif maqsura. This looks like ya, yeah, but it does not have two dots like ya. Yeah. So it is called alif maqsura. And it is a weak letter and it does not carry any haraka. So one may ask that yes, in this Quranic script you have a haraka above it. No, this is not haraka. This is called alif sagheera. Now, uh, as we know this is a weak letter and it is only one count. So whenever you see this letter, you will uh, pronounce as one count taqwa just taqwa that's it but when in quran when you come and see this word in quran with alif sagheera above an alif maqsura that means the count has been prolonged so that means alif sagheera comes and tells you you need to prolong the sound by two counts so whenever you see this alif uh, sagheera on the alif maqsura you will pronounce the sound taqwa one two count so you can see the name of the weak letter is alif maqsura how will you write in arabic alif alif maqsura sorry alif maqsura maqsura that's maqsura means uh, it can also be called as broken alif and maqsura means broken comes from the verb kasara okay it means broken alif so all these about the alif maqsura we have done in step step by step book so you can go back and refer the videos so this is all about the alif maqsura now what about ya maqsura what is ya maqsura let's see point number two is ya maqsura so what is ya maqsura small ya maqsura sorry i'm always saying maqsura it is saghira saghira means small saghira means small the, it was alif saghira now we are doing the ya saghira so here this is the ya saghira what it is known as ya saghira and how does it look like it looks like a small ya now in the uh, no, normal uh, arabic script there is uh, no such ya but in Quranic script, you will find a ya. Wherever you find a ya coming, you will see a small ya over there. So this small ya also tells you to prolong the sound by two counts. And which sound is prolonged here? Which sound is prolonged? The ya sound is prolonged a bit. So in a standard Arabic, you see, you will find two ya's, one and two. But in Uthmanic script, you will not see two ya's, but a shadda and a small sagheera ya here. And it tells you to prolong the sound by two counts. So when you see this word, an-nabiyina, an -nabi nabiyina, you need to prolong the ya sound. For example, here, there is another example, qalbihi. Now, this is the example of a word where the small uh, ya or the ya sahira comes in between. Now, there is an example where the uh, sahira ya comes after the word and now this shows that the ha, the ha has to be prolonged. 
Now, which letter has to be prolonged? It comes on that letter. Now, after the letter, that means the last letter has to be prolonged. So, in this case, the he has to be prolonged by two counts. Now, normally in standard Arabic, what will you do? You will pronounce as qalbihi. That's it. But in Uthmanic script, when you see a small sahira ya coming, that means you need to prolong by two counts. And which sound is prolonged? The ha sound. Qalbihi. That's it. And when you need to pause, even though there is a a small uh, sahira here but you need to pause on ha then you don't need to prolong the sound but if you are continuing reading the ayah then you need to prolong the sound now you need to notice that this small ya at the end of the word a ha is not written in standard arabic but we still pronounce it so let's move on to the third type of symbol. Now, this third type of symbol is, it's the wow sahira. Now, how many we did? We did the alif sahira. We did the ya sahira. Now, we are doing the wow sahira. That means the small wow. So, the small wow also means uh, sorry, the vowel means the small vowel. Likewise, as the alif comes on a letter, the ya comes on a letter, that's how the vowel also comes on a letter or beside a letter. Just like this small ya has come beside ha, a small vowel also can come above a letter or beside the letter. So now in this case, we can see this small vowel coming here in the word Daud. So whenever it comes beside a letter, that means you need to prolong the sound of wow. Whichever letter is there before it, you will pronounce the sound. So in this case, it's a wow. So we will pronounce it by two counts. As you can see in normal standard Arabic, it's two vowels. So you will prolong the sound by two counts. The wood. That's how you will pronounce. Now in standard, uh, sorry, in standard Arabic, it's qalbuhu. That's it. But when you see a vowel after a letter, that means which letter is this before this small uh, sahira vowel is the ha. So that means this sound has to be prolonged by two counts. So in Uthmani script, how will you read? Qalbuhu, that's it. So, whenever you see this type of uh, word in a Quran, that means, and you are continuing the ayah, reading in the ayah, and you are continuing, you are not pausing, then you need to prolong the sound. Qalbuhu, and then start, uh, continue reading. But when you need to take a stop, on this word particularly where there is a sagira wow and you need to pause then you do not need to prolong the sound but you can pause on qalbu that's it that's how you need to pause qalbu same here if you are continuing reading you can read qalbihi but if you need to pause on that you can stop as qalbi that's it. So let's go on and move on to the next type of small letter. That is the small noon here. So it's a small noon. Now you can also see a small noon. So it is known as noon sahira means small noon. So now uh, it is called as noon sahira. And then it's, it looks like a small noon above letter or beside the letter. Same as in the alif or the ya or the wow. And now we see the examples here is nunji. Nunji means to save. We save. It's a verb. 
So it's nunji. Now in standard Arabic, we have double noon here. Nunji. And in Quranic script or the Uthmani script, you can see a small noon here. And this shows that you need to pronounce with a sukoon on it. As it is here in standard Arabic, how you read nunji is the same. You can uh, read here nunji. And there is no uh, sound prolonging, no double, uh, double counts. So it's just you need to pronounce with a sukoon. So that is the only difference between the alif, ya, and waw sagheera and noon sagheera. Now we come to the letter alif on the top of letter waw. Now there is an example here. In Uthmanic script sometimes, you, so it's not sometimes, always you will see in this type of word as alif sagheera coming on top of the Wow. So what does it mean when you see this? It doesn't mean that you need to pronounce the letter wow. You have to omit this letter wow and pronounce the alif sagheera. So how are you going to pronounce? as It's just in standard Arabic you will find with lam alif. So you will pronounce the alif. as That's it. So you will prolong the sound and pronounce as as-salatu and not as-salawatu. It's totally wrong. You need to eliminate the sound of wow. So this is an important point here. Now we come to the letter C. So let's see here. We did the alif. Letter alif on top of the wow. Now we will see letter seen on top of the letter sad. So in this case, these two doesn't have um, uh, some uh, like uh, pro prolonging the sound, but it shows that a particular letter has to be removed. Example, particularly with this word. Now in this case, when the scene is, uh, when the scene, letter scene, letter scene, okay, is seen on top of the sad, letter sad, what does it tell you? It tells you to eliminate the sound of sad because sad is a heavy letter and scene is a light letter. So when you see a small scene over the letter sad, that means you need to eliminate the sound of sad and read yab sutu. This is seen in normal standard Arabic. But in Uthmanic script, you will see <coughs> with the letter sad and small scene over it. <coughs> we read scene, the letter light, letter scene. And eliminate the sound of sod, the heavy sod. So the example given here is yab sutu. You should not read yab sutu. Whenever you see the small scene above it, read yab sutu. So that is the correct pronunciation. Now let's go on to the other symbol. Now all these were the letters. Now before I go to the symbols, let's... Uh, do the all the harakas that we have completed first of all we did the marks that is the harakas we did the three marks fatha dhamma and kasra which is the usual and similar markings in the uthmanic script but the difference is only the sukoon in uh, uthmanic script you will see a sign like this for sukoon but in standard Arabic, normal Arabic books, you will see a small zero. And Shadda is the same. Shadda is the same as in standard Arabic and in the Uthmanic script. And the uh, Dhamma with Shadda are the same. But the only difference is with the Kasra. Kasra you will see below in standard Arabic, um, sorry, in the Uthmanic script and standard Arabic, you will see 
the kasra below the shatta so that's the only difference but it's the uh, the structure or the image of the kasra and shatta are the same and we did the tanmeen we know tanmeen means the double haraka of fatha damma and kasra and the arabic names of the three harakas known as tanmeen and now we did all the small letters what are the small letters we did for example i have uh, already uh, done this uh, long vowels in uh, step by step so what are the long vowels easy way to memorize it is wow alif and ya you can connect this and make an acronym uh, that is the y in english so that's how you can memorize easily so wow is the uh, all these letters you will see here as small letters coming above the letters or beside the letters so the first one we did the small elif then small ya and then we did the small wow or the sagira wow sagira so you know all the rules when you see this you need to prolong the sound and then we did the small noon. the only difference here with the noon and the uh, small alif sahira coming over the wow okay these are the difference in these three uh, letters when alif uh, when the noon comes over um, beside a noon that means this small noon is pronounced with sukun noonji it doesn't have any other verb there is no pro sound pro the prolonging of the sound and when you see an alif on top of the letter wow especially this is a special case when the alif sagira is seen above the letter wow that means you need to eliminate the sound so these two are for elimination eliminating sounds of which letter wow and see um sorry sod wow and sod and here it's only uh pronouncing noon with sukun so here, whenever you see small alif uh, sagira on the wow, you need to eliminate the sound of wow. And when you see seen above the letter saad, you need to eliminate the sound of saad. So this is what we did up till now. So let's start with the symbols. Now there are no more letters here, but the symbols. So let's do the symbols here. It's the small zero so what is this small zero doing here there are two zeros one is the uh, small zero and there is a big zero so let's do what is a small zero and it looks like this and here it looks like much bigger than the uh, zero before now we will see what does it do sometimes found on the letter alif where it is found usually letter alif wow and ya remember all these letters are from the long vowels okay means that these letters should not be pronounced at all at all they should not be pronounced whenever you see a small zero above the letters alif wow and ya never pronounce these letters for example there are b a d now can you see this is the uthmanic script right and what do you see in this uthmanic script you can see two years one and two so there is a small sukoon here on the ya that means you need not pronounce that letter but you need to pronounce only one ya either you eliminate this or this so but it's b a d you cannot pronounce as b a d you cannot prolong the sound of ya so whenever you see a small zero just eliminate the sound of that particular letter and now here comes in the word ulaika 
a small zero is seen above the letter wow that means you need to eliminate wow the letter wow Ulaika, as if there is no wow in between lam and hamza so it's pronounced as Ulaika. as you can see there is no prolonging of ulaika. it's ulaika. you need to eliminate the sound of wow and here when you say qalu, you cannot pronounce this alif. It's totally wrong. So this is qalu. You cannot pronounce as qaluva. This alif does not have any sound here. So this is the major difference. And uh, what is the verb of big zero? Let's see. Always, now where it is found, it is always over alif at the end of the word. That means when alif comes and it usually comes at the end, not in between. So this big zero is usually above the letter alif. This is important point. And it, uh, it is at the end end of the word these are the two important points for the big zero and sometimes over some other ellipse coming also at the end of the word so when we pronounce this elif uh, we pronounce the elif when we pause on that word so what is the work of this big zero and when it comes what should we do for example, here, in the Uthmanic script, you will see this word ana. Ana means I. So, when it comes, you will see a big zero over the elif. So, when we continue, when I am continue reading the ayah and I come across this word in the uh, Uthmanic script, I will uh, continue and say ana with short vowel fatha. And if we pause, we say Anna. That means when I continue, I will not prolong the sound of long vowel. For example, uh, it's an ayah from the Quran. Wa ana rabbukumul a'la. So where when I continue reading, I did not prolong the sound. Wa ana rabbukumul a'la. So, I did not prolong the sound wa ana rabbukumul. I just said wa ana rabbukumul ala, even though there is a long vowel. But if I want to stop wa ana, what should I do? I will pronounce this elif. I will say ana. That means two counts. So, that's the only difference between the small zero and big zero. Now we come to this. Uh, sign mud. What is the mud? It looks like a wave, small wave, um, and it's called a mud sound. Now, this sign tells you that a whenever it comes on a particular letter, tells you that you need to prolong that letter um, more than the uh, more than the vowel sound. For example, let's see. Now, let's see here. Sometimes found over the long vowels. Remember, this mud comes over the long vowels. Elif, vow, and ya. Yeah. It means that the long vowel has to be longer than usual. Usually, we used to count only two for elif, vow, and ya. Yeah. But now, when it comes on long vowel, that means it has to be prolonged uh, more than usual. So, how long it's going to be pronounced? By four counts. By four counts. For all the three vowels. Like, sama in. You need to count on your fingers. Si at. You need to count on your fingers. And su an. That's how you need to pronounce these letters. The most important point here with this long mud, as you can see here, this long mud, when it comes on long vowel, 
pay attention here when it comes on long vowel because long vowel alif and the letter alif are both different actually this long letter alif um, this uh, alif is different and long vowel is different so when the mud comes on the long vowel the count is four now here you can see in standard arabic when it comes only on alif means the letter alif not the long vowel the long vowel and the alif is totally different they may look like same but the word is different the count is different long vowel usually has two counts and alif has only one count and this long vowel comes uh, for prolonging sound but this uh, usually starts and has only one count so here in the uh, alif when the mud comes on alif that means it has only two count that means hamza and alif that means one plus one two counts we have two counts so in a quran when you see here the example is amana so in usmanic script you may see a hamza and an alif in the starting so that means you just need to prolong your sound to two counts and sometimes you may see as Alif with a mud. So that doesn't mean you need to prolong as for amana. Ah, no. You only have to prolong your sound when it is a long vowel. But if the alif is in the starting, because long vowel cannot come in the starting of a word, it it always comes at the end or in the between. So when you see this alif in the starting remember it is only an alif with one count but when you see the mud over it just know that it has two counts so that is the difference between the alif with mud and long vowel with mud long vowel with mud is four counts and alif with mud is only two counts so this is the most important difference between the two so let's move on to the pausing symbol now we will do the pausing symbols what is the pausing symbol these are also letters that has meaning and purpose to come in between the ayahs as there are some examples here from the quran and whenever you see these uh, pausing symbol for example here a small meme if you see a small meme in between an ayah as you can see here a small meme is here if you can see it's in between an ayah so what are you going to do when you see a small meme this meme is different and there is another meme which is in full form so what is the full form of meme full form of meme looks like this and this is simply a half meme without a tail so when this meme comes in between an ayah that means it is a compulsory stop that means it's a compulsory stop you need to stop there you cannot continue reciting so when you come across this kind of symbol for example when you read the ayah Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. وَلَا يَحْزُمْكَ قَوْلُهُمْ Stop and then start reading again. إِنَّ الْإِزَّةَ لِلَّهِ جَمِيعًا So it's a compulsory stop. And <clears throat> the second is permissible stop. Permissible stop, that means you are allowed to stop here you can stop here when you see this gene a small gene here if you see a small gene in between an ayah you can stop if you want to stop and if you want so this is how you need to recite. So again, <clears throat> there is another uh, pausing symbol. 
but uh, it's a permissible stop but it is preferable to continue when you see this sod actually this sod is with lam and ya sod lam and ya so it is called soili you can write in english as soili <clears throat> So, how to remember there is two uh, symbols, sali and qili. The other one is permissible to continue but preferable to stop. If you see qaf with lam and ya, it's qili, known as qili. It's known as qili and you can write as qili in English. So, what is the difference and how to remember? Let's see. Permissible stop means you need, if it is permissible for you to stop here, but if you want to continue and it's preferable that you continue. So, how will you remember? Saad, from taking this saad, wa sala. Wa sala. Remember this uh, verb, it means to connect. Right? So, if you see saad, remember wasala means to connect. It's preferable to continue. So, it's better if you continue with saad. For example, tilka ummatun qad khalat laha ma kasabat. It's preferable that you continue. But if you are out of breath and if you want to stop, you can stop here. But it's preferable that you continue the ayah. So, how to remember? From the sad. From the sad, you remember the verb wasala means to connect. So, now we come to qili. What does qili mean? Permissible to continue. But it is more preferable if you stop. So, how to remember? The, by seeing the qaf. Qaf, remember? Qaf. Qaf means to stop. So, it's preferable to stop. From cough, you remember cough. And from cough, you remember to stop. It's better if you stop when you see a qili. But if you are okay, if you have breath to continue, you may continue. But it's preferable that you stop there. For example, Hum darajatun indallah. Well, stop. Wallahu basir. So, that's how you stop here. It's uh, preferable to stop here. So this is the difference and the trick to remember about soili and qili is to remember the letter and from the letter you remember the verb and then you uh, know how what to do on these symbols. So these are all pausing symbols. Another pausing symbol is uh, stop either of the two. Now, here what you have to do is when you see these three dots, uh, it always comes together. You cannot see just one coming alone. These two come together. Stop at either of these two places but not at both. So, when you see this is uh, from the uh, Alif Lam Meme, you can see Alif Lam Meme. Uh, so you can see these stops there so either of the thing like for example here so either you stop here on la raib and stop on ba either you stop here or you can stop you can stop here. But you cannot stop on both. You cannot stop. You cannot stop on both. Either you stop here or here. Either of them you can choose. If you want to stop here, you can stop on la raib and then continue. Or if you want to stop dhalikal kitabu la raiba fi, you stop here and continue hudallil muttaqin. So there are two options here. Either to stop here or stop here. You cannot stop on both. 
So this is the uh, most uh, important actually here is the breathless pause. And now when you see this small scene coming on um, an eye in between an eye, that means you need to stop here without taking breath. This is most important. Stop at the letter without taking a fresh breath and then continue the recitation. For example, how you have to continue? وَقِيلَ مَنْ رَاقِلْ Now, when you come to man, you have to stop here and you should not release your breath. Hold your breath and for two seconds or three seconds count on your finger and then start uh, reading the ayah again with the remaining uh, breath. So again I will say وَقِيلَ مَنْ رَاقِلْ That's how you need to stop with without releasing your breath. So this is known as the breathless pause. This scene when it comes in between an ayah is the breathless pause. What is the other scene? The other scene comes on the letter sad. When it comes on the letter sad means you need to cancel the sound of sad and read the scene, light scene. So both have a different work to play. So let's move on to Hamzatul Istifham. Uh, sorry, not Hamzatul Istifham. It's the Hamzatul Wasl. Just now I have uh, given you the verb wa sa la. <clears throat> This is the past tense. Wasala means to connect, right? So from this word, you can understand what is Hamzatul Wasal, right? And what is Hamza? Now, this is the major confusion in uh, the students who learn Arabic. They don't know the difference between the letter Hamza and the letter Alif, actually. So, in the Quranic script, whenever you see this alif, there are a lot of rules. That's why I told you to do step by step the script writing rules for uh, uh, beginners because it has a lot of important rules before you start this uh, Arabic grammar. So, let's uh, go on to this uh, Hamzatul Wasal. Actually, Hamza is a letter actually. Hamza is a letter. It does not come alone but it always comes with a seat. For example, it comes with a seat alif. Always sitting above an alif or sometimes below an alif. So, when it has a lot of work, okay. Now, Hamzatul Wasal has a work means it connects. So, sometimes you will see in the starting, sometimes you will see as this, as a starting. And when it is an Hamza, when it comes in the starting, it is known as only Hamza. It is coming as a letter Hamza. You should ignore the letter here, which looks like, uh, which is an Elif. Actually, it is the seat of Hamza on which the Hamza sits and comes. So you need to ignore this and pronounce Hamza. The sound of Hamza is only A. Ah, that's it, one count. So when it comes in the beginning of a word or a noun, it is only Hamza. It may either come above it or it may come below it. And when it is in Hamza, the Hamza is written just like this. Hamza is written above it or Hamza is written when it is with Kasra and when it is with Fatha it is written above. When it is with Kasra it is written below and when it is with Dhamma it is written above with Dhamma. So here when it is in, uh, in the beginning it is called Hamza. Either it is with Kasra, Fatha or Dhamma. But when Hamza comes in between, like this here, it is known as Hamzatul Wasal. How it is recognized? It is recognized with this sod. 
and this sad we know the original letter sad looks like this right but here it is the only half sad written above an alif so this tells you that this is a uh, sorry this is hamzatul wasal this is hamzatul wasal when you see this half saad over this, know that it is Hamzatul Wasal. Now, what is the work of Hamzatul Wasal? When you know the meaning of Wasal is to connect, that means you need to omit this and continue from Fatha to Lam. And you will read as Innal. So, actually what you are reading is in. First in and the second noon is with fatha and I am omitting because Hamza, Hamzatul Wasal is omitted and from noon it comes to lam, lam with sukoon, innal, innal izzata, izzata. So how are you reading here? In, in, nal, Izzata. And I am you are going to uh, omit the Hamzatul Wasal completely here. That's how you will read the word. This is from the Tajweed rules actually. So now what happens? In al Izzata. So what can you see here? Your sound, your uh, recitation is in continuation. Like in al izzata am i reading in al izzata am i reading hamzatul wasal no i'm not reading reading hamzatul wasal i'm going direct from in al izzata omitting hamzatul wasal this is known connecting your sound that's why this is called hamzatul wasal means the connecting hamza you can say as connecting Hamza. How do you recognize? By this saw above it. And how do you recognize it is only a Hamza? By seeing a Hamza with Fatha or Kasra or a Dhamma. So that is the main uh, details of Hamza Tul Wasal and a simple Hamza. Now the small meme now let's see what is a small meme coming here the small meme in full form coming over the letter noon now i told you there are two types of memes one is a half meme uh, sorry it's like this actually one is a half meme and one is a full meme so we did the half meme that comes in between the ayah. That means it is a compulsory stop. Now we will do this full meme. When it is a small meme, full meme coming over noon. Especially over the noon what happens. When it comes specially over the noon what happens. For example, here in the Quranic example, Usmani script is when you see a noon and there is a letter bar next to it. What happens? This, the sound of noon is changed to mean. You need to change the sound of noon into mean. And how do you read? You will read Mimba the Mimba So this is how you will change the sound of noon into mean. This is from the Tajweed rules, and this change of sound from noon to mean is called uh, Iqla. It is from the rules of Tajweed. It's called Iqla. Okay, iqlab means change and this word comes from qalaba. Qalaba is to change. Okay, the verb qalaba is to change. So, whenever you see a meme over the noon, know that 
there you have to change the sound of noon into mean and you have to make a hunna sound of two seconds or three seconds you need to make a hunna like a nasal uh, not a nasal but um, a sound of humming sound that's how you have to recite now coming to the next one is the small meme in full form coming sometimes with tanmi now when is this full form meme comes with tanmi what happens you will treat it as a normal tanmi for example here also what happens whenever you see first of all you saw this full meme on noon now you see this full form uh, of small meme in the tanween dhamma so what happens when you see this meme the next letter is ba remember the rule of ikla changing the changing meme you can remember as the changing of the sound sound meme okay so now here you have to change the sound from noon to me now one may ask where is the noon where is the noon actually whenever you see the tanmeen dhammatain or fathatain there is a noon hidden in it for example i'll show you now if you read normal it is sami'un with the tanmeen you will read sami'un sami'un basirun so actually there is a noon hidden in the sound tanween sami on okay sami on this noon is in the sound of tanween how do you sound when you say with the tanween the matan sami on this noon sound is in the tanween noon with sukun so and our rule of tajweed of a club is changing the noon sound into me so this hidden noon is there in this tanween and you have to change this noon hidden noon sound into me so what are you going to do you have to change the sound into meme sound because the next letter is ba so what are you do doing here sami basir and you need to make a humming sound of 2 to 3 seconds here sami basir that's how you are going to read so let's move on to the next one is the letter ya in full form at the end of the word so here now uh, again if this um ya comes and usually it comes in the uthmani script you will see this ya without dots up till now we learned that there is a dotless uh, ya and it is known as alif maksura which is a weak letter but in uthmani script what happens the normal ya comes without a dot for example here you can see there is no dot but still it is a ya fi in normal standard arabic you will see a ya with a dot but in uthmani script the ya comes without a dot so here you can see the examples al qawiyu even though it doesn't have a dot but i know it is a ya because of the difference in the script normal arabic book you will see with a dot and in uthmani script you will see without a dot now again coming to the next point here the letters that are free of any mark are not long vowels their mark is considered sukun very important point here <clears throat> for example <clears throat> in uthmani script what happens when you come across a word um and you see uh, sorry a word in which there is a letter and it doesn't have a mark above it it's empty for example here in ba it's empty it doesn't have a mark 
So what does it mean? Does it mean you don't have to read it? No, it means that it has a sukun. We will consider it having a sukun. Okay. And the next example is here with the qaf. Does qaf has a, any haraka here? No, it doesn't have any haraka. So we will assume that there is a sukun. So in this case, how will you read? Idrib bi asak. Idrib bi asak. Now, <clears throat> here what is happening? There is a ba. And there is a ba hafjar here. Why there is a shadda here? Why? Because when there is a ba and ba, what happens? This is the sukun. This ba goes with the sound of ba here. Both ba becomes together. Idrim bi asa. So there are two bas. That's why it is the uh, reading purposes or the tajweed rule. The shadda is given here so that you can read continuously. And you should not start and then read idrib bi asa. No. You have to continue your recitation, your sound. Idrib bi asa. Be asak. You ha don't have to stop here. Continue your recitation. Idrib be asak. That's how why it's given a shadda here. For example, nakhluk kum nakhluk kum. You have to continue. You cannot do a qalqala here. Nakhluk kum. Because this qaf letter is from the qalqala letters. Qalqala is also another rule from tajweed where you have to shake the letter like nakhluqal. You have to shake the particular letter. Nakhluqal. But here you don't have to. You just have to read with sukoon. Nakhluqum. Nakhluqum. So that's what the rules from, the, these are all the rules from Tajweed. Now there is an important uh, rule here and I have already discussed this. The Shadda you see at the beginning of the word Bi Asak is due to the Tajweed rules. The last letter Ba in Idrib, for example here, there was no Haraka here on Ba. It merged in the second Ba here, that is the Harfjar. So this ba merged with harf jar b and that's why there was a shadda to continue with the letter ba kasra only. Idrib bi asa. And there is a small um, here information on learning tajweed. This is uh, for everyone who has started the journey learning Arabic or they want to learn Quran. It's really important that you first learn tajweed. But the, if you learn grammar, it will help you in learning Tajweed. So your first step should be learning grammar. And then you should, when you start uh, your journey with the grammar, go on. And in between, you start your journey with Tajweed. Both goes hand in hand. And if you have the knowledge of grammar, Tajweed will be very easy for you to understand, inshallah. So there is a small information here. The scholars agree that uh, it is for the ayn upon every Muslim to learn Tajweed. And they have given a um, proof from uh, the Quran. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. وَرَتِّلِ الْقُرْآنَ تَرْتِيلًا That means that uh, recite Quran in a very beautiful, melodious sound, beautiful voice. You should not uh, read Quran with uh, uh, too many uh, mistakes or without any... Uh, your attention you should pay attention on what you're reading and your voice should be melodious so this is from the command from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with this we come to an end of our lesson inshallah i'll be uploading all the videos regarding this this was an introductory lesson i hope it's clear for you and any questions you may put in the <clears throat> comment box and i will be uploading the uh, uh, pdf uh, link from this and you can also download this lesson PDF from the 
uh, site here quranic arabic wordpress.com you will find all the lessons that i will be uh, <clears throat> explaining and discussing here in my channel all the lessons from level one two you will find all the lessons here so you can download all the pdfs of the lessons from this site it's a very good site inshallah till then assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh